Okay, continuation on Terra Hipped, the beginning, part one. Chapter four, the Thillion. The universe is unfathomably big. Even after Scythe has destroyed most of it, what was left is in full display to his curious children. Tig took the venture and discovered a world with creatures similar to her. Humans, an intelligent species with the Cytonian ability to create, but more importantly, the ability to control. Tatra, who is one of those humans, Tig closely studied and replicated, gave her a whole new insight of what it means to be a Cytonian. In the middle of that platform, Tig became like Tatra, with eyes that can see color, ears that can hear actions from a distance, and a nose to sense molecules in the air. She was overwhelmed with all of these new sensations that somehow felt really refreshing. Tatra stood in awe as the being right before her transformed into something even taller than her, skin becoming golden, and a head with shining plates and those iconic black spikes protruding from the sides of it. Tatra asked, Who are you? Tig paused, then responded, I said that my name is Tig. And before Tatra could even say anything, Tig continued, I know that you do not know. I come from the sky, the dark place with stars shining. You come from the night sky? Tatra curiously asked. I found you, and you are interesting, Tig responded. Tatra stood there in disbelief, not understanding how such a powerful being could even find her interesting. We worship you. My father is dying from something I do not know. Tig felt slightly surprised. Perishing from something the human senses can't understand. The sensations she felt to be so new and so refreshing, yet still had issues unanswered. Tig slowly paced around, trying to deduce what invisible force could be responsible for the death of such a precious species. With Tig's massive intellect, and the situational awareness that humans possess, Tig came to a conclusion. Do you cook your food thoroughly? What? Tatra responded. Do you know about the tiny creatures you are surrounded by? Wh what tiny creatures? Tatra asked. It was then Tig realized that humans with their great potential yet did not have the tools to understand the world from the smallest to the largest. Standing there in total silence, Tig was faced with an immense task to teach the humans in order to keep themselves alive and healthy. She may appear as a god to them, but she is only one person with so much to think about. The platform they were both standing on descended back towards the beach. Tig still stood tall and unfaced and signed Tatra to return back to her people. Are you going to leave us? Tatra questioned worriedly. 
Tig shook her head. No, I will not leave this world. Tatra in reluctant motion slowly left Tig's platform and walked back to her tribe. Tig was still standing there on that platform with a blank stare. She has never felt such a deep conundrum of something so simple before. Is this what all humans are suffering from? Is dying from age a misunderstood knowledge of external hidden enemies? How come a Cytonian like her can live for billions of years, yet the amazing humans only live for decades? Tig returned out to sea, planning for something that would revolutionize the knowledge between the mortal and the immortal. Far out, where the mainland could only be seen as a faint line, Tig created a small land floating above the waters. There she could delve deeper into the elusive mechanics of biology and the building blocks of all life and create a being so perfect to never get sick from an inferior filth that is so small, but yet so destructive. Tatra returned to her tribe. All of them were very excited to see her return. The head leader of her tribe approached Tatra. Welcome back. Did the bright being teach you something? Tatra looked down and clasped her hands. No, she responded. All of her clan folk got slightly suspicious of her response. You came back with nothing to say? They asked. Tatra did not know, but she said, Their name is Tig. They came from the stars we see in the night sky. Tig left me alone, and then Tig came back looking like us. I told Tig that my father is very ill, and then they told me that small creatures are killing him. I do not know what is happening. Everyone in her tribe started to feel uneasy. The children huddled close to their mothers. The men took their spears and knives and stood in defense with their weapons aimed at the ground. What else did Tig tell you? A man said with a stressed tone. I don't know, Tatra responded. Calm down, friends the leader said. What are these creatures? He asked. Tatra, being as clueless as she already was, she said, They are tiny, and we cannot see them. After that, there was one man who never even picked up a weapon. He said, Ugh, Of course. A new being who states that something is wrong does not know what we are struggling with. Tig probably saw an ant, and that is what worried them. Be quiet, Dalib. Tig has shown us great enlightenment, the tribe leader interjected. The conflict within the tribe continued for hours until they heard a sound coming from the path leading to the beach. A person appeared. It was a human, but they did not look like any human the tribe have ever seen before. They had a lean body, a head with large, pretty eyes, skin as smooth as silk, and a wide mouth stretching cheek to cheek. Everyone in the tribe stood all silent, just staring and ready for a fight. 
Tatra is the only one to walk forward. Are you Tig? The odd person immediately responded. No, I am Theolin. I came here out of curiosity. Everyone was still cautious by the whole situation. There's no worry. Tig is my parent. No, 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 no. Wait. There is no worry. Tig is my parent. She gave life to many of me, they said with a big grin on their face. The tribe leader asked, with slow, prying words, Tig created you? What are you? The person paused for a bit, with her eyes drifting to the left, and then responded, Athelian. Chapter 4, The Thillian End